Hello again everyone, my name is Vermilion. After countless hours of playing, comments, and community testing, I'm finally bringing to you another updated video for all of the Zombies Dark Ops challenges. But before we start, I just wanted to let you know that you are all appreciated and that I cannot believe how fast this channel has grown. It truly astounds me to know that a little over 2,000 people enjoy watching my videos. If you are new, consider subscribing only if this video was of any help to you. For those that are returning, I've actually created a Discord for everyone. If you're looking for friends to play with, wanting a chance to play or talk with me on streams, or just wanting to be a part of something great, the link is down below for you to click on. So without further ado, let's jump right in. We're going to be going down the list that is shown in game after unlocking all of the calling cards. Our first calling card that can be done passively is Reaper of the Undead, which requires you to achieve one million kills total in zombies. Dead Ops Arcade does not count towards this challenge unfortunately, but if you only play zombies while leveling up weapons and doing camos, you already have roughly one third of this calling card done. Don't worry too much about this calling card, you will get it passively over the course of the game's DLC with new weapons and maps. Continuing with Armed to the Teeth. This requires you to have two fully pack-a-punch weapons with ammo mods and six perks. This Dark Ops challenge is very easy, you just won't be able to use the ray gun for this challenge as you cannot apply ammo mods to it. Find your favorite training spot to earn enough points and you'll be set. Social distancing is honestly the most difficult challenge in normal zombies. This calling card requires you to reach round 20 without taking any damage. I know it says without taking a hit, but it's any and all damage. If you want to see a legit strategy, I have a short video on my channel. However, I will show you a new method if you have friends. This method will require that your friend carries you through the rounds or vice versa. The one who will be getting social distancing will need a tier 3 ether shroud to teleport and will need to play it safe until they can reach the med bay. Once you have made it to the med bay, have the person going for social distancing look at the door and use ether shroud this will teleport the player in between two barriers where zombies will not be able to hit them meanwhile your friend on the outside will need to go through the rounds without opening up to power otherwise the barrier will open for the person getting up to round 20 i recommend ring of fire tier 3 and doing the trials for pack a punch weapons perks or even the wonder weapon also if you want to go through rounds faster you will need to stay by the person in the glitch as the zombies will pile up around med bay due to the glitch player still being near the location also take note that even with stamina up, fall damage will still take effect, so do not take any fall damage whatsoever. Stuns can also hurt you. Our next calling card, the anvil, is deceptively easy. All you need to do is use your knife the entire game and exfil. What I would recommend is just leaving power off to prevent dogs and the megaton from spawning in. You can grab jug, quick revive, stamina up, as well as armor if it drops. Try to spawn until you can exfil and then make your way over. I would recommend ether shroud so you can go invisible and melee the zombies. Take your time and you'll get this easily. You can also have a friend help you. Just do the same strategy while having your friend do all the dirty work. Another round is our next very challenging calling card for those that are not used to high rounding in zombies. I'll show a safe legit strategy as well as an exploitative way that will make it very easy. For the legit strategy you will need tier 3 ring of fire. For the early rounds you can do whatever you would like but be sure to get the ray gun and a legendary shotgun with the task force barrel and dead wire or get the die wonder weapon with the nova 5 upgrade. The shotgun and the die will be your backup weapons. Once you're fully set up hop onto the back of this truck and place yourself in the corner of the upgrade crate and the cap. This will cause all of the zombies to mantle very slowly on the back of the truck. While this strategy strategy can be very brain dead, you will still need to focus on megatons. If you cannot kill them quickly enough, run over to the crash site and use your ray gun if you have ammo. Otherwise, just use your shotgun or buy ammo from the crate. Once you have taken care of them, another thing you have to look out for is that zombies will occasionally sometimes throw their meat at you. If you're not paying attention, you can die pretty quickly to this. The only downside to this strategy is that you will not be getting salvage due to the zombies being mid-mantle animation. I don't know why that is, but to compensate for this, when you do your runs for the megaton, grab as much salvage as you can. That way you can also keep a chopper gunner on you at all times or get self revives for a get out of jail free card. Our exploitative way has a very easy setup, which I'm sure you all know, it's the god mode glitch. All you have to do is turn on power, make sure that this door stays closed, build pack a punch, and make sure that the part spawns in med bay, then build the ether scope. After you build the ether scope, you will want to activate the coffin dance. If you do not know how to activate it, I will leave a link to it in the description. After shooting the last orb, immediately start a timer for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, seconds, talk to the anomaly near the salvage upgrade station and wait until you're about to teleport out. Then run into speed cola and stand on the stairs. You will notice that all of the zombies will now ignore you. The only thing that can hurt you is self damage or the dog explosions. Just make sure that you do not walk past the upgrade station until about a minute has passed. 
Once you think it's gone, you now have god mode for the rest of the game. I would recommend staying by Deadshot after this glitch, as there will only be one spot where the zombies pile up since you left that door closed. If you grab the Pack-a-Punch part in that room, then you'll have two different spots behind you and in front of you. During dog rounds, be sure to kill them as soon as you see them, otherwise they will wander around the Pack-a-Punch room. This next one is very misleading in a lot of ways. Good enough challenge requires that you reach round 20 with only your starting loadout. I recommend that you use the Hower or the Gallo with the Task Force Barrel attachment that gives you bonus damage on your weapon. For your field upgrade, I would recommend Aether Shroud. If you feel confident, run Ring of Fire for those faster rounds. From the information I have gathered, you can use armor, perks, and equipment. You just cannot change the weapon you are using for this calling card. When the Megaton spawns in, I suggest either using the Combat Bow or the War Machine to finish him quickly. The Hower with Ring of Fire will also do decent damage. From here, just rinse and repeat until round 20. Invincible is an easy challenge. All you need to do is make it to round 30 without going down. You can use the God Mode glitch for this or use the higher round strategy I previously mentioned for an easy clear. Our next one on the list is Checkmate. You will need to play every trial inside of D Machine. I recommend gathering a ton of points and then saving a zombie at the end of the round to cycle through all the trials as quickly as possible. This one is just a time waster. Harbinger of Doom it requires you to kill 50 enemies with a single support. If you are doing a high round game, this one will be done without you even thinking about it, but after round 25 through 30 in solo, you can purchase a chopper gunner and kill all of the zombies that spawn in and you will get this calling card super easy. For Evil Unleashed, you need to complete D Machine Machine's main easter egg. There are plenty of guides online, including my own. If you are interested, I will leave a link in the description for my guide. Box Addict is another simple one. Buy every weapon from the mystery box in a single game. As mentioned in my last video, I do not believe the wonder weapons count towards this calling card. As I have had friends complete it without the ray gun and the die, including myself, I'd recommend hoarding points again and leaving a zombie to hit the box. Our final two challenges are both in Dead Ops Arcade, which is the perfect time to mention that I stream right here on YouTube every Saturday to help people get the trophy and the following calling card. So, if you would like some help with these, tune into the stream. King of the Silverbacks requires you to earn an accumulative score of 999,999,999. Again, an accumulative score. So it does not require that in one game. If that was the case, the game would last an entire month. I recommend doing this on solo as you will get all the extra gold and multipliers as long as you do not go down. If you make it through the wilds early on without dying and grab everything, it's possible to leave with 2 to 3 million score or even higher. As for our second, we have Pristine Pelt. In Dead Ops Arcade, you need to defeat the Mama back in the final round without dying. I have heard that you will not get the calling card if you go down at around 64, so play the entire round safely. If you are a really good player, I recommend that you get Furious Feet to avoid the Mama back and zombies. If you are in a group of two or more, the Mama back's health will scale, so make sure that everyone in your team is doing damage all the time. Play it safe, use those power-ups only when you think you're about to get trapped, and if your teammates do go down, donate extra lives so you can get extra items to kill the Mama back faster. If you would like a full guide, I'll leave it in the description. From here, as long as you have beat 11 out of the 13 calling cards, you will be rewarded the Dark Ops Master calling card. Well, boys and girls, that is everything up to date as of December 9th for legitimate strategies and exploitative ones. If any of these new ways have helped you, remember to consider subscribing. It's free and you can opt out at any time. And I also just wanted to announce that I will be doing season pass giveaways once season one drops. I'll be giving five lucky people the upgraded season pass bundle that usually gives you 20 tier skips. If you are interested, then follow my Twitter, join the Discord, and once season one starts, we'll make it happen. As for me, I'll be continuing the Call of Duty grind.